Okay, can you hear me all right? So just uh, for curiosity, who's, what's the breakdown here? How many seniors do we have in the room? Okay, yeah, so you're kind of staring this down in the face. It's, it's crunch time. How many of you have a good idea of what you want to be when you grow up? Excellent. All right, that's one. Hey, that's good too, maybe. All right, that's great. Yeah? Michelle, yeah. <laughs> you have, yeah. Well, the reason, the reason I ask this is because I came to Fairfield um, in the midst of a career change. And um, I really, th I thought for a while I knew what I wanted to be. And then I realized, nah, I didn't really think, nah, that wasn't going to work. I was going to do something else. And, um, and so the opportunities that I had here, I think, were really, um, really shaped me in, in, in significant ways. Uh, today, when I was getting ready, I work at, in a digital humanities lab at uh, Yale University. It's an experimental sort of thing. Um, we're trying to do something for uh, research in the humanities that's done a lot in the sciences. And uh, it means that I spend my days um, asking questions in the humanities using and answering those questions using computers in some way. Um, and so I was asking around the room, and one of the advantages is I get to work with a, a, a ton of talented, amazing people. And so I said I was coming here this evening, and I was speaking, and I, and I said, you know, how many, how many languages do we know? There are about five of us right now, two postdocs in the lab, and, and we have a designer user experience person. And, and so we started going through the list, and I, I write this down. I'm, I wrote it down just so that I wouldn't forget. Um, we have working in the lab Hebrew, people, there are people who know Hebrew, French, Swedish, Finnish, Norwegian, Italian, German, Chinese, Mandarin, and I don't know the difference, like how that works, but they were keen to point that out, um, and uh, Spanish and also Portuguese. And so that already, not to mention then, C++, Ruby on Rails, all the artificial, right, all the programming languages, which I thought was really interesting that there was this uh, compatibility, right, between people that have, uh, that are accustomed to learning human languages, how easily they take that also to programming languages. Programming languages actually are, are pretty much a cinch because computers are really stupid. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not nearly as difficult as learning a human language. Um, the other thing that struck me, though, was uh, study abroad. I asked my colleagues, and uh, three of us ha were Rotary Exchange students in uh, high school. Um, one of, uh, one of uh, the students was an Erasmus fellow, that's the European equivalent. Um, and then there was another one who had done, she did study abroad in Japan. Oh, that's right, I didn't put Japanese in there. That she did study abroad in Japan um, while she was in college. So it's just to give you an idea that this is not, we're not talking about a, a part of a university that is focused necessarily on foreign languages. And in fact, uh, we have, we bring to bear though all of that knowledge um, that we've all brought with ourselves um, on our own work. And I think it's, I think it's really, I think it's really important. I know that that was important for us when we were hiring uh, our most recent developer. We, we were hiring someone, we needed someone who knew how to speak to humans and to machines. And so one of the, one of the criteria that we established was, well, he's got to know at least a couple languages, because otherwise it'd be kind of embarrassing for him too, right? Um, and and, and and that was and that was really it wasn't just about the knowledge of the language it was also the idea of a world view this is the field that I'm working in right now is sort of an experimental field my PhD is in Italian language and literature but I'm now working in a field that is really has yet to be defined and so <laughs> I like to think that we're kind of making it up as we go along, but by the same token, you also need a very high tolerance for uh, being able to communicate clearly, uh, being able to tolerate 
a certain amount of risk, you know, take a little bit of risk in your work, being able to tolerate a certain amount of ambiguity. And these are all things that I think have come along with me as a result of both my language learning and my time um, spent abroad. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that the um, support that I received from my uh, language professors and then colleagues here at Fairfield um, was absolutely transformative for me. It, it really gave me sort of the idea that, you know, this is something that I can do, um, that there, this, is, this is something that I can reach for. And I think that that's something that is established within a language classroom many times. Um, you see your language instructors far more often. You're forced to embarrass yourself far more often in front of your language professors. They come to know you um, as you start out speaking like a two-year-old Spanish, actually no, two-year-old Spanish children speak better than you were speaking, but still, you you start to learn and, and you've, you're in a space where you're allowed to grow and stretch yourself in, um, in really significant ways. And I think that that too also, when it comes time, and, and your instructors may not may not like this or not, but when it comes time for a letter of recommendation, I would definitely hit up a language instructor because I think that they can speak to your cross-cultural competence, they can speak to your communicative skills, and they can speak to your hardworking ethos because you know after having gone through your language requirement, your requirements for the major or for the minor, that you definitely have a, a certain level of uh, 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 of hardworking um, um, initiative within yourself. So I'll stop at that. If you'd like to ask questions afterwards, I'd be more than happy to answer them, both on digital humanities and on changing careers. I think that uh, many of you may find yourselves 10 years, 15 years down the line in a similar uh, position. Um, but for now, I'll, I'll cede it to my um, ex-classmate, James.